third Sunday of Advent. So far, we have had the candle of hope, and the candle of joy. Today we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of peace. We remember for prophets who spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a saviour would be born. A king in the line of King David, for prophet Isaiah called Christ her Prince of Peace. They told us how he would rule the world wisely and bless all nations. We light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that through him we can find peace. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophet said you will bring peace and save your people from trouble. Give peace in our hearts this Christmas. We ask that as we wait for you to come again, that you will remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. We ask these things in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. Thank you to the Akawua family for opening our worship today with our travelling Advent wreath. And a warm welcome to you all. It's 12 days till Christmas, so how prepared are you? Like so many occasions, it's so easy for the practical details, even this year, to swamp the heart of it. So for these next few minutes, I encourage you to reflect, to pray, to worship. Jane Webb will be bringing God's word to us today. But now we have a song from the Cameroon, an Advent song. He came down so that we might have love. You might find it quite hard to stay still on the sofa during this song. us pray using the titles given in Isaiah 9. 
wonderful counsellor, as you are attentive to us, so we long to be more attentive to you. We worship you and give thanks for the works of your hands, the inspiration of your spirit, the signs of hope all around us. Mighty God, you are all powerful, reigning over all from the dawn of time to the very end. All things are possible for you, and yet you choose to work with us. May we honour and trust the love that you put in us. Everlasting Father, you care for each one. You rejoice with us and you weep with us. You nurture, encourage, build up and challenge. Each experience of life is an opportunity to know you more deeply. Help us to learn and grow in trust in the light of that. Prince of Peace, though this world is in turmoil, we can take refuge in you, trusting you to be our rock. Keep us steady in these days of uncertainty. You promise peace beyond understanding, wholeness amidst fragmentation. So we wait on you.
Jerusalem, enemy troops have surrounded you. They have struck Israel's ruler in the face with a stick. Bethlehem, Ephra, you are one of the smallest towns in the nation of Judea, but the Lord will choose one of your people to rule the nation, someone whose family goes back to ancient times. The Lord will abandon Israel only until the ruler is born and the rest of his family returns to Israel. Like a shepherd taking care of his sheep, this ruler will lead and care for his people by the power and the glorious name of the Lord his God. His people will live securely and the whole earth will know his true greatness because he will bring peace. This is how Jesus Christ was born. A young woman named Mary was engaged to Joseph from King David's family. But before they were married, she learned that she was going to have a baby by God's Holy Spirit. Joseph was a good man and did not want to embarrass Mary in front of everyone. So he decided to call off the wedding quietly. While Joseph was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord came to him in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, the baby that Mary will have is from the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and marry her. Then after her baby is born, name him Jesus, because people will save his people from their sins. Greyhound racing. There's a topic to start a sermon. I've never been, but I've occasionally seen shots on the television. Unlike horses, of course, greyhounds don't have anyone guiding them. They chase a mechanical rabbit made out of fur, which zips along a track, controlled by a steward who keeps the rabbit just ahead of the dogs. In Florida, some years ago, a big race was about to begin. The gun fired, the rabbit started along the track, the dogs took off after it. Then, at the first turn in the track, the rabbit short-circuited, stopped and exploded. The dogs didn't know what to do. Some laid down panting, two ran on into a wall and broke some ribs. Another chased his tail, and the rest howled. Not a single dog finished the race. The rabbit wasn't real, but they needed a hope, a purpose to keep them going forward. And without it, they were lost. Three voices today. Back in the time of the prophet Micah, who grew up in a village, small village south of Jerusalem, the people of Israel were having a truly dreadful time. The prophets understood that this was a punishment that God allowed for their faithlessness and disobedience. But nevertheless, they were suffering terribly. The northern kingdom had fallen. Many of those who survived were sent into exile and others crowded into Jerusalem. And Micah was given a word from God for the people. Let me paraphrase. You'd better prepare yourselves. Marshal the troops now, Jerusalem. David's city is under siege. The people suffering pain like a woman in labour. The king himself is at risk. I don't know what the future holds for you. It's going to be dark for a long time. But God says there is hope. Not from the power of the army or the machinations of the king, but you, Bethlehem, little town though you are, from you will come one who will be ruler. This won't be any ordinary ruler either. His origins are from old, from ancient times. You know what that means, from the family of David. It will still keep on being hard until the time when she who is in labour 
gives birth. Prophets have been described as those who speak a greater truth than they know. Mary would indeed give birth to Jesus in Bethlehem, of the lineage of David, yes, but his origins are truly from ancient times. He was there in the beginning with God, the word through whom creation was brought into being. Micah continued this picture of hope that God had given him. What sort of rule will this baby bring? He'll stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord. His greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. And he will be our peace. What an amazing picture of hope Micah heard from God and gave to God's people, never dreaming how long it would take, but how true it might be. Yes, life was dreadful, but God had a plan to keep them looking forward, to give hope. Just those first little green shoots appearing above the ground of what would be one day, when a baby would be born who would grow up to say, I am the Good Shepherd, and offer us his peace. What do you do when the whole world goes pear-shaped? People respond to COVID-19 over the last year in so many different ways. Have you seen the footage of a young woman in a shop who got so angry, maybe about wearing a mask, I don't know, that she swapped off a shelf of bottles of wine, the entire content, so that they smashed on the floor, completely out of control, angry and despairing. The next voice we hear is Joseph. How did he react when his world went pear-shaped? He was a carpenter, so he didn't rush things. You can't hurry wood, he might have said. Unlike Micah, God's message of hope for Joseph was intensely personal. Joseph thought he knew what his future held. It was all he had ever hoped for. He was betrothed to that lovely young girl called Mary. But then it all went wrong. How did he respond? We'd been betrothed for a while. I was so looking forward to our wedding to making Mary, beautiful, God-fearing, loving Mary, my wife. And then one day she came to me with a story that she was pregnant, expecting a baby given to her by God's Holy Spirit. All my hopes completely dashed, ruined. She'd never lied to me before, but this? I could divorce her. Infidelity is certainly grounds. In the old days, she'd have been stoned. That was what the teachers used to say. But even thinking about it, considering it, I can't see the right way. I don't want to believe it's true. Though I can see she's carrying a child and it certainly isn't mine. I don't want her to be publicly disgraced. An object for people to point out in the street. I thought about what God's word said and decided eventually I had no choice. I had to divorce her, but I could try to do it quietly, so most people would never know. But having taken time, considered it, and finally come to that conclusion, God sent an angel, one of his messengers who visited me in a dream, and said, Joseph, Son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. What she says is true. The baby she's carrying is from the Holy Spirit. Call him Jesus, because that's what he'll do. Save his people. Could I trust a messenger in a dream? Dared I hope? When I woke up, I did what God's messenger had told me to do and took Mary home as my wife. And from then on, I could see God at work day by day. Easy? No. 
but praise God for caring for me enough to bring me hope in my darkest hour. Today, it's dark, cold and dismal. Whose is the third voice? Well, it's yours. Are you able to receive God's message of hope, even if you don't understand it? What's he saying to you at the moment? Our son had snow in his Essex garden last week, but already the snowdrops are up. Little green shoots of hope that next year will come. Through the last year we've said, maybe they'll find a vaccine. At first it was a very faint hope, but now the first people have received it. Those green shoots are growing into something a bit stronger. The creativity, the God-given gifts of the scientists who have worked so hard has borne fruit. There seems more willingness for governments to work to slow climate change. That's a sign of hope too. And this week Sally from Just Ice told us where her hope had come from. She said, I was standing in a shanty town just outside Lima in Peru. About 20 Christians stood, praising God at the tops of their voices, thanking him for everything he'd given them. Except from where I was standing, they had nothing. None of them wore shoes. The church was simply the bit of ground outside a lady's shack. But boy, did these believers have something. So my curiosity got the better of me. I had to ask what exactly were they thanking God for? Jesus, came the reply. For Jesus! And so started my journey to find out the source of such joy, such gratitude and such hope for myself. Like Sally, like St Paul, we live after Jesus' birth and death. And resurrection. We don't need to chase a pretend rabbit. We follow the King of Kings. But there are so many millions who need to hear or see a message of God in action in us. Do you have a message of hope that God has given you to pass on to others as Micah did? Have you, like Joseph, taken time to consider, think, and pray about what God is saying. Is God bringing you his hope in a way that you can trust in it, even if you don't understand all that it may mean? As we prepare this Advent to celebrate his coming, I use St Paul's words from Romans, chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, as you trust in him. Amen. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church. Gather today Longing for peace Our world is troubled Longing for hope Many despair Your word alone Has power to help us Make us your living voice Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, 
shine in your church gather today longing for food many are hungry longing for water many still thirst make us your bread broken for others shed until all are fed Christ be our light shine in our hearts shine through the darkness Christ be our light shine in your church gather today For shelter, many are homeless. Longing for warmth, many are cold. Make us your building, sheltering others. Walls made of living stone. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness, Christ be our light. Shine in your church, gather today. Many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, making your kingdom come. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church today. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Thank you, Jane, for your word to us today. We do indeed long for light. And this week, at one of our noon prayers, Jean shared a prayer poem that she had written as an expression of her heart. And so she is going to lead us now in prayer with this poem. Almighty Father, hear our cry across your vast and endless sky. Although we are but specks of dust upon this revolving earthly crust, hear our cry for those that roam across the lands, risking waves and shifting sands, for those that live with war and strife, their children starved of the joy of life, for those that sow but never reap, and bellies grown with naught to eat. Hear our cry. Hear our cry for those that sit alone and wait for a friendly wave at the garden gate, for the dark world of the spiritually blind and those lost in the torment of their troubled mind. Almighty Father, hear our cry for this our world and all mankind. Thank you, Jean, for sharing that with us. We do indeed cry out for our world in these days, but we cry out to one who hears, who understands, who has lived amongst us 
So as we finish today, hear again the blessing that Jane used at the end of her sermon. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you this week. And if you would like to follow up anything or would like someone to pray with you, please get in touch.